everyone, and welcome into the Impact Sports Podcast. My name is Nick. Uh, look forward to having a one-on-one conversation with a guest. As you can see, I have a guest here. We are in Spring Hill, Tennessee at D1. Um, this is where you actually train and, and work out here and everything. Uh, I want to thank them for letting us use this room here. Um, it, it's always great when people just let us use stuff. They don't even know me. I was actually talking to the owner earlier, so I just want to give them a quick shout-out. That's D1 in Spring Hill, Tennessee. Check them out on Instagram and everywhere else. Um, so, yeah. I'm going to let you introduce yourself here in just a second. I also want to give a quick shout-out to two of our sponsors for these episodes. Um, they support us, so I want to support them. Uh, that is the Soul Goals Podcast. I'll have that link down below. Incredible stories. If you if you want to hear some stories about people overcoming some adversity in their lives, definitely do that. Uh, it's not even in the sports world, really. Um, it's just people in their lives that have gone through stuff like cancer and a bunch of other things. Incredible stories of hope and resilience there. Soul Goals Podcast. Next up, that is Fast Pitch Films. For any softball fans that may be watching this, or even I think they dabble in flag football now for women. I love what they do for women's sports. Um, check it out, Fast Pitch Films. They have incredible photography, videography. I love what they do. Their Instagram page is filled with a bunch of great content. Uh, so, yeah, go ahead and introduce yourself, and then we're going to jump into our conversation. I'm Brooke Bolden. Uh, I play beach volleyball. Um, I go to Independence High School uh, here in Tennessee. Um, I'm a senior, and I will be attending Coastal Carolina University to play beach volleyball. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. And, yeah, beach volleyball is actually something uh, I've started learning a lot about. I've gotten to – you were actually my first beach volleyball athlete that I interviewed, and then I've kind of interviewed some more mm-hmm. after that. Um, and I've, I've actually loved getting to know the sport a lot. Um, that's that's kind of why I fell in love with the sport of softball. I got to know it more because mm-hmm. I was always a basketball guy. That was kind of <laughs> my main thing. Uh, but I loved interviewing people of different sports. So I loved getting to know the sport that you love and are going to college for. Um, so what we're going to do here, you and I spoke, it's been a little bit now, we spoke first time online. So what we're going to do here is just dive deeper into conversation, kind of get to know you behind your sport, because I know you play sports, most people know you play <laughs> sports, but not a lot of people know everything underneath that, and that's why we're here. Um, so the first question I want to talk about is something, for me, I know is very important, and you brought it up. This is a, one of your topics that you brought to me, and that's mental health. You know, uh, Actually, I know you and I had a, an interview scheduled, and then I took a break uh, from doing interviews, um, and then I actually changed the name, and all that good stuff happened. But I took a break for about a month, honestly, and that was to focus on my mental health. So it's very important to me to kind of know where I was in that, to keep that in check. So I'm going to ask you just how important is that to you? Obviously, playing athletics at a high level, there's a lot of pressure that goes with that, a lot of demand, especially in the women athletic world. You know, it's a Mm -hmm. lot of demand, stuff like that. So how important is that to you to kind of always remember your mental health? Uh, Like you said, mental health is one of the topics I brought to you because it is um, a huge part, in my opinion, of the game. Mm. Um, And if you can't... uh, keep your mental health in check, then everything else can just spiral into a hole. Yeah. Um, I think confidence goes along with that as well. Um, and I've always kind of struggled with confidence uh, in my sport and honestly in life in general. Yeah. Um, and I think knowing um, knowing that you're good in your sport obviously helps with your performance. Yeah. Um, you need to be confident to perform at a high level and perform at your best, but just trusting in your skills, trusting in the process, trusting in God. Um, knowing that you can perform at your best um, and just understanding that. But I also think uh, to help keep your mental health in check um, is to focus on your growth mindset um, Mm, instead of a fixed mindset. Um, So to have a growth mindset, I think that gives you more opportunities um, for achieving your goals uh, instead of a fixed mindset where basically your failures are all you're going to achieve. And so that's a really big thing that I've been trying to focus on is having that growth mindset, um, and I think that's helped me a little bit with my mental health uh, and just keeping that in line. And uh, one last thing that I also do is setting goals. Um, Mm. Setting goals definitely helps um, make sure that is still moving along. Yeah. Um, So as long as you can set achievable but still challenging goals, um, that'll help you realize whether you're taking steps towards those goals, towards achieving those, or moving farther away. Yeah, and I think – and what you said, honestly – I spoke to you a little previously before we started recording about just kind of my life over the past four years. And you said something that I've said to, uh, especially the people in my life, my wife, she's heard it a million times. I can tell you growth mindset. I love that you said that because that's what I've had to do. I mean, is understand that, you know, the failures in your life, whether it's in your athletic career or in your personal life or whatever it is, it isn't final. You know, it's not, that's not who you are. And, and for me, that was really hard for me mm-hmm. to, you know, not wear around like a shirt that said, oh, failure, you know, whatever. <laughs> um, just the other day, my wife and I were talking about this. I, I, I probably talk about that more than anything. And I'm sure she gets a little tired of hearing about that. 
but uh, I just recently read a book. I, I definitely recommend for you checking out. It's called The Greatness Mindset. And it kind of sounds like, oh, I'm not like I'm going to always have a great mindset. No, it's really just about how you get there from coming from the failures in your life. It's a guy that was in uh, the military and had a lot of things, you know, uh, you know, he had a lot of things go wrong. Uh, a lot of things happened. He like he ran over a bomb in the in the thing he was driving there. And it was just talking about how, what he's went through. Then now to where he's at, he's like a entrepreneur, a business guy now that's made this huge business. And it's really great talking about that growth mindset. So I love that you said that. Um, so now. Uh, let's go to just balancing things. Uh, you, you do a lot of things, uh, but also you're young and you know, you, you want to have a life outside of your sport, but I know to play a sport at a high level, one thing that's echoed a lot is their sacrifice. You know, you got to do a lot of stuff. Um, we're here at the place you come and do, I'm sure you've been here a lot and I'm sure you do a lot of stuff and putting a lot of, uh, as one coach told me, sweat equity into what you do, you know, cause you're going to college for a sport. And that takes a lot, you know, no matter where you're going, what sport it's in. I've talked to many great athletes, and one thing is common between every single one, and that's work. you got to put work in. So I want to ask you, how do you balance that? You know, working for your sport, your personal life, you're, you're a student athlete also, so you got to balance that now in high school and eventually college. How do you kind of balance everything that you want to want to achieve, like you talked about your goals, and that you have to do also? Um, so balancing everything, I'm not going to lie, it's – quite a handful, <laughs> um, like I'm sure you've heard. Um, but I also talked in our first talk about um, just having, like, consistency in your schedule. So mm, yeah. um, knowing, like, I set aside certain days. Um, obviously, I have a s- don't just go into the day winging it. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> like, I know these are my set days for working out. These are my set days for practicing. This is my rest day. I think a rest day is also very important. Um, yeah staying on top of your training, but also recovery is just as important. But um, I am a student athlete first. uh, But one of the things I've been trying to work on is procrastination. (laughs) Um, And I do a pretty good job of that in school. Senior year, it's not not too difficult. So that's definitely helping me figure all that out. But knowing um, when I'm given the time to do something, that's when I do it. Uh, Mm. And so then I don't have to try to squeeze my schoolwork into my already busy night or something. Um, I get that out of the way when it's when I'm given the chance to. Uh, and then I have my set days for practice and then my set days for working out and then everything else just kind of falls into place. That's when I have my personal life and that's when I get to do what I want. But sacrifices are a big part of being mm. an athlete yeah. and especially growing up indoor volleyball. Um, I had to make a lot of sacrifices. There was a lot of things I missed <laughs> um, and switching to beach. I got a little more free um, time to be able to pick when I got to play or um, if something was coming up, I knew that, okay, I can take this weekend off to not have to sacrifice mm, and miss yeah, that. Yeah. So that was really nice getting that. But yeah, I do understand all the sacrifices that have to be made, um, through sports and yeah. yeah. Wh- which I want to ask you something too. We, we talked about before we started recording, uh, you talked about your, your final indoor season in high school is over and you're, you're about to not be wearing those knee pads anymore <laughs> and switching to the beats. And I, and I said, it's the same sport, but different. So speaking of like working out and stuff and training as we're here in the D1 building, what kind of stuff are you doing for your sport? I, I know, you know, I'm just now learning a lot about your sport. Mm-hmm. So what kind of like, what, is there anything specific that you're doing, like working out wise for your sport in particular? Um, I mean, I have, so I have a set workout plan okay. um, and then I work out with one of our trainers here, but um, just staying on top of your training. Um, I, between indoor and beach, there's not, I don't see a, much of a difference okay, in the physical you. working out part um i mean obviously you're playing on a different court um, yeah now is the, is the sand I'm, I'm sure you've gotten used to it now for me like i remember trying to work out we used to live in jacksonville florida and i would go to the beach i'm like i'm gonna go run and do all these crazy <laughs> things and it's tough so like is that tough for you yeah i'm sure um, now <laughs> it's not that tough for you but yeah um well i just so i just had my first beach training back um this this week okay okay since uh, for the first time in a couple months, actually. Um, <laughs> I'm sure that was rough. <laughs> yeah, um, I would say I've always thought um, just because of, I mean, there's only two people on a beach court, yeah, yeah. and obviously sand is a little bit tougher to move in than hardwood floor. So I've always thought that um, that side, it's it's a little more difficult to change from indoor to beach rather than beach yeah. to indoor. It's definitely an easier switch going into my indoor season rather than leaving my indoor season. Um, but it's a pretty quick adjustment. Um it's not like I get t- super out of shape and indoor. Um, I think it's a little, obviously, a few different muscles here and yeah, there. Just but, different um, in little ways. Yeah, um, but it's it's not too different. It's it's an easy, it's a pretty easy adjustment, um, and just getting getting back into it pretty quick. It's not I too bad. I got you. Awesome. Well, thank you for answering that. I just I wanted to know that actually. I was going to ask you earlier. 
Um, so now I want to talk to you about, you know, we, we kind of talked a little bit about training, um, you know, and stuff like that. So let's talk about like what's like whether it's conditioning. Uh, y- this is one of your topics, like eating habits and stuff like that, which I know I was actually this is a funny joke um, for some. I was talking to a runner the other day and, you know, in track track stars, you know, in college or like I don't even think this guy has any body fat on him <laughs> at whatsoever. And I was I was like, man, I, you know, I, I was told him this off camera. I was like. I really want to be like that. And I said, so what do you do? And he told me everything he did, working out, but also the eating stuff. And I said, okay, so it seems like I want the life but not the lifestyle, you know, because it's like, man, this guy does a lot of stuff. You know, and I know for your sport, you know, you got to be in shape, you know. For any sport at a collegiate level, you got to be in shape doing that. So what kind of like, what other conditionings are you doing? And then your eating habits, because I know for a lot of people, that's tough to, you know, kick when you're like trying to get, you know, I know a lot of, you know, players that I've talked to, like, you know, football, basketball, whatever, it did, like off season, they're going to be like, oh, I'm going to do this. And then in season, they're like, I got to do this, you know. So how, how has that been for you? Um, yeah, so starting off the eating and um, that side, I think understanding it's, it's not a bad thing to eat. Um, <laughs> I think some people, like, kind of take that the wrong way, um, especially yeah, with Yeah, some people can go pretty far with it, yeah. I think how demanding um, my sport is and obviously other sports uh, – only two people running in the sand in the blazing heat. That's pretty exhausting, yeah. um, knowing that you have to fuel your body, um, but using the right foods to do it um, and just getting foods that have protein, nutrients that are good for your body and that are going to give you energy too. Um, but another big thing is uh, hydration. Mm, yeah. um, and I did bring my hydro flask. <laughs> I carry that thing around pretty much everywhere. Um, but I think... I do I do a pretty good job about it, but drinking a ton of water and electrolytes and refueling your body um, in the blazing sun, so you quite literally don't die. Yeah, um, it does happen in the sand. People do have to take. Oh yeah, I'm sure there's been a lot, of, uh, a lot of things. Yeah, <laughs> people passing out just in the sand. It's just it's it's exhausting, um, and you have to you can't just act on it as it's happening. You have to prepare for it and mm. be hydrated days in advance and be fueling your body the right way days in advance. You can't just yeah. act when you're playing or something. You have to prepare for it. Yeah, and something you, like you, you have to be mindful about, mm-hmm. you know, and, and you, you kind of brought it up to earlier. Like it's good doing training, working out, you know, getting your body right with food and nutrition and everything else. But you, you said rest. That's important. Uh, that's something I know a lot of athletes have a hard time with mm-hmm. because they're like, oh, I'm going to lose this or lose this. And it's like, no, you're not. I mean, I get that mindset, you know, because it's hard to slow down. Yeah. Sometimes, and I, especially in our world where everything's <laughs> go, go, go. But you do have to do that. And like you said, get the proper, especially like you said, when you're outside because beach volleyball, it's called beach volleyball for a reason. <laughs> you're outside and it is hot. So thank you for sharing that. So now I want to talk to you about family because I know I've gotten to meet so many great families wh- with what I do, you know, whether it's uh, going to games uh, or, you know, tournaments anywhere, whatever sport it is. And I've gotten to talk to the parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, or, you know, guardians of people. It, it may not even just be family, but I know athletes – you know, need that support in their life, need people in their corner for everything that they do Um, because you're a human just like everybody else, but you're trying to do the best you can in your sport. So how big has your family been in your life with helping you, not just in your athletic life, but just personally too with, you know, being a student athlete now, your dreams of going to college and playing the sport. How big has your family been in that? Um, They've obviously been a huge part of my process from the day I could walk and step on (laughs) a court or field um, until right now. Uh, They've been my biggest supporters and and appraise them for that as much as I probably don't tell them. Um, it does mean a lot. And especially, I'll start off with um, my dad. My dad is probably the most encouraging to me. Um, and as much as I don't tell him this, I'm very thankful. He sends me a text uh, before every practice, before every mm, game, that's cool. um, everything, a, a little encouragement text, um, and then finishes it off with have fun. That's all he wants me to do is make sure I'm having fun mm. and smiling. Uh, that's one of the biggest things, and I think that really does help me no matter what kind of mood I'm in, and it can always make it a little better going into whatever I'm about to do, um, so thanks, Dad, for that. <laughs> <laughs> it really does mean a lot, and then uh, I'd say my mom is she biggest cheerleader. Um, she takes me everywhere. I think the biggest thing that has happened to her would be me getting my license. <laughs> she's glad I I'm can I'm sure she's like, <laughs> um, well, kind of <laughs> nervous, but also, yeah. Yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely nervous, <laughs> um, but 
I think that was one of the big things that she was thankful for. Um, yeah. But she's been my biggest cheerleader um, and biggest supporter, especially during my switch from indoor to beach volleyball. Um, that was my it was my biggest backbone. And no matter mm. no matter what I decided to do, it was it was one of the toughest dishes, decisions I made in my life. Um, and she was there no matter what I had to say about it or what was going through my mind. She was there to support me. Um, so I'm really thankful for that. And then I, I'll throw my brother in there too. Um, I think my it's brother. Good to give the brother a shout um, out. I th- I think. He is part of where my competitive spirit comes from. Um, he does not play sports. He played sports growing up uh, just as a kid. Now he's in college um, at Auburn. I think we talked yep, about that yep, before. Yep. Um, but growing up, no matter what it was, we were always competing in everything. He f- did finally admit I was the better athlete <laughs> in the family. Um, Got him to admit that now. <laughs> but um, I'm very thankful for him always being that tough big brother um, and letting – Letting me lose and everything I did when I was younger, <laughs> but <laughs> got me to where I am now. So awesome. Yeah, it's always good. You know, I've gotten to meet, uh, like I said, so many great people. And, you know, especially in an athlete's life, whether it's traveling or whatever, like you said, that your mom's happy now that you can go a little places by yourself there. Um, but it's always good because it's stuff people don't see, you know, mm-hmm. except for you, obviously. And that's what matters the most. But the outside world, they may see you out there on the, the beach or the court or whatever on the sand and everything else, but they don't know like, oh, this is what everybody has done, you know, since then. So now my my next question and getting, we're about to round out the the questions here. Um, You and I spoke a little bit about this earlier um, and I changed the name recently. We, I was the Brotherhood Sports Podcast, so I can now say we're formally that. So I changed the name to Impact Sports. And the reason why is that word impact. And for me, um, I shared a little bit about this with you. Um, It's it's taken me a long time to figure out the impact I want to make. Um, we are both people of faith. We have shared that openly um, with each other. And, you know, it, it's taken me a long time. And I can tell you, when I was your age, I didn't care about that. I didn't care about impact or whatever. I really cared about myself, just to be honest with you. Um, and that's why I was kind of sharing that with you off camera. Um, but I changed the name to that because now I think I can, can see clearly now what I want to do. And I just want to help in any way that I can, whether it's this right here, what we're doing here, or in other ways with, with Impact Sports. Um, and like I said, it's taken me a long time, and you had shared a little bit about your struggles with that um, and everything. So I kind of want you to just, I'm going to give you the floor. You can talk as much or little as you want to about just your struggles with, you know, whether it's purpose, you know, because I know a lot of people have questions with that. My, that question, uh, I don't think it got, ever got answered for me, you know, because I think that's one of those we may go to people in our lives or even God about it. And sometimes we might not get that answer that we're looking for. Um, because like many, I'm an impatient person. I don't know about you, but, uh, I, I just didn't want to wait. So I tried to open those doors myself. Um, and, and what I had to realize was it really isn't my timing. And now like, it's kind of crazy to see this, but doors have kind of opened when I waited the mm-hmm. worst thing I hate doing, but it kind of <laughs> happened, you know? Um, but I just wanted to share a little bit of that and I'll share more after you, you talk, but I just want you to kind of talk about that, whether it's impact or purpose, just share kind of a little bit about that. If I'm being honest, I don't really know what my um, purposes or what impact I'm trying to make. Um, I do know I want to make an impact on the younger girls um, mm. and how yeah. they see me. Um, and I want to make an impact uh, through following Christ, um, yeah. like we talked about. But I don't fully know how to do that. Mm. Um, obviously, we all struggle in our walk yeah. with fa- our, our faith um, and our walk with Christ. Uh, and so I just... I haven't fully understood how to do that, especially um, being a person that struggles with confidence. Yeah. Just in general, it's not easy to make an impact when you can't really show that you want to make an yeah, impact, yeah, yeah. if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, um, it definitely does. And so, like, I think me trying to be more confident myself would definitely lead me closer to that, but I yeah. I just don't know how to get there yet. <laughs> yeah, well, well, I will tell you, I, I shared a little bit about this with you, and I'm all about... Uh, we, we spoke about this, and you said you wanted to share a little bit about it, so I didn't want to put you in an uncomfortable position because I am all about authentic conversations here. Mm-hmm. Um, I love having people know that, like, athletes are not just the most perfect sculpted people in the world, you know, whatever. Um, everybody, even, uh, you know, last night uh, Iowa was playing Caitlin Clark. Everybody knows who that is now. Mm-hmm. Caitlin Clark has problems, you know. Everybody's got problems, um, and it's good to share that, I think, you know, because that also goes back to your the mental health stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but, I, you know, if I can share anything with you, um, that I've learned because I'm definitely older than you. So let me sit back here and be the older guy. I'm not saying wiser because you may be wiser than me. Um, but it's really just right now, I think, you, you know, it's, uh, I actually shared this with some people the other day. Uh, I actually had a, an athlete, a young woman reached out to me. She was in college for softball and she was talking about it's really hard and she may not be playing anymore. 
uh, her decision because just a lot of things. Mm-hmm. Um, and I love that she shared that with me because I know that's tough. You know, something she did her whole life, you know. And I sent her this thing, um, and I'm probably going to butcher this right now because I don't remember <laughs> it. I should have pulled this up. Um, but there's a book, and it's called – I'm going to butcher this probably, so look this up. <laughs> the mole, the fox, the horse, and the boy. You may have heard of it. I don't know. But basically, there's there's this part in the book where they're in this forest, and it's really foggy. And it, this is going to make sense, I promise. But they're in this forest, and it's really foggy. And the animals can talk, so, you know, it's okay. <laughs> um, but the boy says, I, it's just, it's really foggy. I can't see. I can't see. And the horse says, can you see you're right in front of you? And he said, yes. He said, just take that one. So basically, it, the the thing, the lesson is, just that next step, whatever you can see, because, I mean, you're young, you know, mm-hmm. uh, and, you know, I think it's like you may not can see what your whole impact is right now, because, like I said, I'm in my 30s, and I just realized that. So, now, maybe you can realize it quicker than me, but I don't think that's a bad thing, if, if you know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. I, I think, you know, you talked about confidence. I was a person, I grew up with a lot of confidence issues as well. Now, I don't have that now, because my wife tells me I can talk to anybody in the world, <laughs> but... Um, I, I think that is a, a part of it, you know, and I think that's going to develop, you know, when you get off to college because um, you're going a little bit away from, you know, your hometown. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think that's OK. And, and to me, I will tell you, you talked about you don't know how to do that in your faith. Um, and I'm sure you learn a lot about this. I'm, I'm not the only person that's probably said this. Uh, but I think really what I realized is my purpose is what God has given me, you know, and, and right now I have a wife and twin boys, um, which are crazy. But that's what God's given me. You know, and, and I first want to impact them, mm-hmm. you know, and then I want that to expand. And then God has also given me now this platform, no matter how small or big it is, and that's what I want to impact. So to me, it's like really I try to reach for it, and I think that's okay to reach for stuff and do your absolute best. But sometimes you just kind of sit back and go, okay, I- I'm waiting, mm-hmm. you know. And then all while doing it, not being like passive, but still doing, you know, your stuff, you know. If that makes sense right. to you, I'm sorry if I'm rambling a lot. No. Um, but I think it's it's okay to not know yeah. right now, you know. Uh, just, just to be honest with you, because like I said, just being full transparency here, it took me a long time and I'm still figuring it out. Like I'm still, I mean, I, as I said, I took a break. I didn't even know if I was going to do this. And then something kind of happened during that break, which is why you take breaks sometimes and rest mm-hmm. because that kind of resets your mind and, and have, you know, recovery, silence and solitude. I, I said a lot in silence. I didn't even open a Bible. Sometimes I just sit there because in the Bible, what does it say? Be still. And I think that's really hard for us to do nowadays. <laughs> There's actually another book uh, that I, uh, it's called The uh, Ruthless Elimination of Hurry. Um, it's talking about how our world is so busy and crazy and go, go, go. Uh, I call it a microwave society where it's literally you want everything right now. And like popcorn, it's like, you better pop for me right <laughs> now and make it. But like, and I'll, last thing I'll talk on this, there was a pastor who I really respect in my life. He said, okay, tell me, if y'all are having a home, if y'all are having a meal at home, would you want a microwave meal or a home cooked meal? And I said, you know, of course, home cook. It's going to be better. He goes, what's well, going to take longer? And I'm like, oh, okay, I get it. What, you know, and I think, you know, sanctification is something you hear a lot in the faith world. And that means it's just a process. And that is your whole life. So you got a lot to go on that. So hopefully that encourages you a little bit. So I'm going to end on a fun note here since we kind of got a little deep there. But thank you so much for sharing that. I really appreciate that. Thank you for sharing. Here's You're welcome. Too. So tell me something uh, fun about you. Like what is somebody – that may not know, they know you play sports, but what is what is something else you enjoy doing besides beach volleyball, indoor volleyball? What is something else you enjoy doing? Hmm. I answered this on, um, I mentioned a little bit, but definitely one of my top things to do would be, uh, obviously only during the wintertime, but snowboarding. Um, so are you, are you good at that? Um, cause I've tried one time and I, it's hard. So I grew up sk- or whenever I first started, I skied. Okay. Um, and in my opinion, skiing is a lot easier. Um, and my brother snowboarded. He never, never skied. Um, and eventually I like, he just, he was still snowboarding. I was <laughs> like, I want to, I want to do that. I want to do that. I want to do it. And so I did it. Um, I switched and haven't gone back. Uh, I mean, obviously still fall. Yeah. Um, but so and snow hurts sometimes yeah, it does it does um yeah my mom thought i <laughs> got a concussion the first time i fell because i just kept going um but that happens um that's why you wear a helmet gotcha you, so you what is uh, where, where do you go sometimes um, or do so y'all go a bunch of because obviously you're in tennessee so you're not that far from some right. mountains so there's um in indiana a couple hours there's perfect north so that's just for a little weekend trip okay. um and then uh every once in a while we try to go out west to colorado or utah um somewhere out there for a longer trip and you know out 
west coast skiing i think that's a little better than our <laughs> little east coast valleys and hills um but uh and then hopefully i'm getting to take a trip to new york um for a ski trip soon so okay, that'd be okay, cool, i haven't, yeah. been, haven't been to that side and gone skiing yet um so i'm hoping for that so that would be good to get to experience that snow too yeah um but yeah i i've heard that it's easier to it's harder to learn how to snowboard but easier to master okay okay I got it's you. easier to learn so if you just kind of stay with it and yes stuff. yeah yeah i believe that's awesome well <laughs> i think that's right well thank you for sharing that i love that you have something to do that kind of gets your mind away because obviously your life is filled with sports and training and working out so it's good that you have that um you know we actually went to uh what is wherever Appalachian State is at, uh, up there. The yeah, you know I what know I'm talking, you're talking about. about. Okay, Boone, coastal, Boone, North Carolina. Coastal just played there. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so we went they there won. and we did some uh, hiking and stuff like that. Which my wife got sick because she had altitude sickness, and then we did these little things. And you know, I've lived in the South my whole life, mm-hmm. so you don't get a lot of snow. And that snow up in like yeah, West Coast, anywhere up there, like that is snow. Like I remember yeah. first time I seen snow, I was like, what? Because and especially because I'm originally from Alabama. So, you know, when we get little snow, like one inch, everything closes. You know, it's like close down the entire town, you know. Like, I remember we had to cancel a, uh, a basketball game because of it, and it was like it was barely snowing, you know. But, hey, well, thank you for sharing everything with me tonight. I look forward to uh, getting this out there. This will be up uh, tomorrow. Well, when you're watching it, it's up. <laughs> um, I do want to encourage you guys to, to uh, you know, go uh, like and subscribe to everything of ours. We just try to share and help athletes with their journey. Uh, thank you for sharing everything you shared tonight. Again, I want to give a shout-out to D1 here in Springfield for letting us use this. Thank you, Brooke, and good luck with everything coming up. Thank you so much, and thank you for having me. You're welcome.